moving on now, our next topic is going to be digitizing an energy company. How do you do that? Well, to tell us how it's done, I'm happy to introduce today a member of the managing board at E.ON, Mr. Carson Vildbega. Let's give him a round of applause. There you go. Thank you. Good morning. Let me first check the sound. Can you hear me? Is that OK? Good. So good morning, everyone. What I'd like to do is I would like to talk about energy. And energy matters to all of us. And I'd like to talk about what digitization does to our industry and how things are changing and how we at E.ON are changing. And I want to do three things. First, I would like to give a very brief intro what we think about digitiza digitization, how we think about it in general. Then I would like to briefly talk about what digitization means to the energy industry, and particularly to E.ON. And then I'd like to share three very specific hands-on examples that document how we are changing as a company and maybe as an industry. And I'd like to close with some, for me personally, very important remarks about culture. So as humans, we are actually trained to think linearly. Everything moves in a linear fashion. And that's actually very bad in order to predict the future and what's happening around us. Because a lot of change around us is going more and more exponentially. And we are so much strains in the linear world that we really get scared by the evolution of digital. And just one example that highlights it, let's just look at the years it took to reach 50 million people with different innovations. The first one, radio, took 38 years to reach 50 million people. TV, 13 years. Internet, four years. iPod, three years. Facebook, two years. And what knocked it out of the park is Pokemon Go. It took 15 days to reach 50 million people. That's the kind of the time scale we are talking about and how profound the changes are. And behind digitization, there are general forces that sit behind. And they're quite universal. And that's why there is no single industry on the planet that is safe when it comes to being disrupted by digitization. The first one is what I call richness and reach. With digital, you can reach the whole world in a second. You can offer, look at Amazon, millions, billions of products. So you have incredible reach, inc incredible uh, richness, and incredible reach. Secondly, the cost curve goes to marginal cost zero. Of course, it's all about data, algorithms, computing power that enable us to get much more insights about what's going on. And as a function of that, innovation is speeding up. About every eight years, the speed of innovation is doubling. And that means we have exponentially growing business around us, and they are the force of today and the future. And last but not least, and very important, customers today, because of digitization, have simply more power. As an individual, they can access data, they can share their experience, and they have much more choice. So customers and also individual customer experience for every company is becoming a very important factor to be successful in business. And because of that profound implication of those driving forces, I usually say, when people say, hey, what's your digital strategy? I don't think a digital strategy in its own right makes any sense. So we have decided there is only strategy in a digital world. So the separation of digital and your normal strategy makes no sense, regardless of what consultants may tell you. So what's going on in the energy industry? So in the old days, and of course, this is a, a transition that takes time, we have a linear pipe model. So you have large power plants, you have transmission lines, you have distribution grids, and it's all large central system, very rigid. And you, as customer, have no choice. But now we are moving to a connected world. Some people say energy gets democratized because individual customers can now produce their own energy. 
They don't need the big guys anymore. Of course, we still have large parts of the old system, but that is transitioning into a much more decentral world due to technology. So we talk about solar. We talk about offshore wind, onshore wind. So green, clean energy, CO2 free. We talk about small scale energy production, decentralized, and it is becoming customer centric. I know that many of you think my electricity comes out of the socket. For many customers, it's also a very emotional topic, something you can engage in and do so much more with energy. And the next wave, the next 50 years, will be about electrifying the world. We will move more and more into an electrified world. Look at e-mobility that is eventually coming. And that also means that more because of green production, we have more and more electric energy that we can use. So what does that mean for E.ON? Who is E.ON? We're an energy company, a European energy company, also with operations in North America. And today, we have three businesses. One is large-scale, industrial-scale green energy production. So wind farms onshore, offshore, in North America, in the North Sea, solar farms, really like a big power plant. The second pillar is energy networks. To be precise, say the middle layer and the low voltage layer, what we call the distribution layer, and that is the internet of the energy change because this is where all these distributed energy sources get connected. And the third pillar of ours is customer solutions. This is about a whole range of products, energy efficiency products, and that you can think of. We announced beginning of the year that we will acquire energy, want to acquire energy, in a deal with RWE, one of our largest competitor, energy. That is a kind of mirror image of E.ON. And as part of that transaction, we change once more for the right reasons. So the new E.ON, dependent of course on approvals, etc. that's all happening as we speak, we will focus on two things, on distribution networks and customer solutions. That means as an energy company, we go all in in customer business, in products, in services, through the grid and through customer solutions. And the renewables part as on large scale basis will go to RWE. And that is a chance actually for the industry, for Germany and for Europe to advance with this model, the energy change, the energy vendor, and also innovate better and more for customers. Now, when you think about digitization, everyone thinks about how's Google doing that or Amazon and Microsoft, all these sometimes more pure plays. I think what is very important is for us as an asset-based industry, it's not about becoming a digital pure play. It is actually mastering the transition to combine an asset world with a digital world. And that is not easy. And I think that pure digital plays, they struggle with becoming managing assets, but I think we have a chance to combine assets with digital, and that's what we do. For the grid, there is one transition that we are mastering as we, we speak. And these transitions, because assets are involved, they take several years. And what is the transition from the linear pipe model to on the right-hand side to a smart grid that can work on a very local level, that has hundreds, thousands of solar systems connected, batteries that interacts directly with commodity markets in an automated way. So it becomes very fragmented and fast reacting. The only way to master that transition is through using data in real time, software and applying it and managing the grid. And there is some fascinating research happening um, where you can actually move electrons, electrons around knowing where they are going. So the old conviction of that you can't move energy package like data package is actually changing as well by tagging electrons with data packages and moving them through the wires. 
On the customer side, we talk a lot about a broad portfolio of, and I'll just run through briefly, what energy companies and what we at E.ON generally do. First, we supply power, gas, and heat, and increasingly green. We make sure they are green. Secondly, we have in all our markets, seven markets, products around smart home, smart meter enabled, wherever we have the smart meter with software applications. So we move out of the space of traditional energy and go into the application space. And then there's a whole raft of new, very exciting products that grow very quickly. And that's what we call new energy solutions. The first one is e-mobility. That is about charging infrastructure at highways, motorways, 50 kilowatt or 150 kilowatt, that's what we are building, the petrol station of the future. And there's a lot of work that has to be done in the grid to enable that. We have charging solutions for business customers, for cities. We are one of the, we are the leader in Copenhagen, for instance. We run a charging network with 2,000 charging stations with value-added services like car sharing, roaming offers, fixed tariffs, so the whole portfolio around it. So that's one big area. The second is, one is for residential customers, we offer batteries, PV systems, heat pumps, everything that you can become more independent and do more with energy. For businesses and industries, ranging from small business to large corporates, we are engaging on a CO2 agenda, decentral energy production, making energy also safe in today's world because we live in a very volatile energy world. We do a lot of software, energy efficiency measures. We even go into the production lines and cooperate with clients to make their production better because the information you can extract from energy. And then we are very much engaged in making our cities, helping to make our cities cleaner. So new city quarters, a better way of living, be it in Munich, in Berlin, in Malmö, or in Stockholm. This is what we are engaging in. So this is the whole product portfolio. And everything we do is more and more underpinned with data and software and what we call digital. Now, now more specifically, to move into three specific examples, what we are doing and how we are changing. So we think of approaching becoming more digital as part of our overall strategy in five layers. First, it is about truly capabilities and the culture. It's very much about how people behave, they approach the topic. It's a very cultural topic, that's the foundation. And I'll talk about this last. The first layer in terms of what we do is automating what used to be manual be it in the back office when we serve customers, being how we manage our grids in terms of how we do maintenance. This is what I call process automation, reducing waste, becoming leaner, more cost efficient, and also more customer friendly. The second layer is changing the customer experience and the employee experience. So how do we make sure that customers can engage with us in everything they do on the mobile phone? How can we make sure we engage with them on social media? that we follow up on a complaint on social media instantly? And how do we make sure that this experience evolves how, in the same way that our customers evolve? And that, of course, means that you, as an established business, also have to take your employees with you. That's why this is important. And then we apply digital to what I call, again, reinvent our core business. You may know the sentence in a company, this is how we used to do things here. Sometimes you have to throw it into the bin and rebuild it and build the core again on the basis of the latest breed of technology. And the last one, and which I put on the top of the pyramid, of course we also work on new businesses, on new products that would generate revenues and profits. The first example I'd like to give is about automation, making our processes leaner. It looks complicated, it's very simple. Let me explain what I'm showing here. So the problem we're solving is that in 1.5 million kilometers of wires, if you like, across Europe, with lots of 
assets, transformers, et cetera, et cetera, copper, copper cables, you have to manage that and you have to do replacements. In the old days, which used to be two years ago, you would do replacements on the basis of tables that you get. Oh, this transformer is 40 years old, let me get out and throw, it, throw this one out and take a new one. So you would go very much on experience, how we used to do things. Today, we've switched in Germany all our maintenance processes to um, a data-driven methodology. So how does that work? So in the old days, you see a linear curve. In order to replace or to be on the safe side of the curve to reduce outages, you basically have to remove, if you want to improve 50%, you have to remove 50% of your equipment. What we have now managed with algorithms and putting sensors everywhere into our grid, using the data, weather data, the engineers know where to go in the grid to make sure we do the replacements, do the repair work to keep the grid stable. And that means today we have a lift factor of one to four, so we need to only replace 10% of the equipment to have 50% impact versus 50-50. And that is just the beginning, but this is where the future is going. That's example number one. Example number two is a software application we are rolling out with many of our clients. And that means this particular one is a retail example in the UK. That is a retailer with 250 outlets. Cooling, so bigger outlets, light system, heating, cooling, uh, HVAC, but also cooling um, the food and the freezers. And they have quite a high energy consumption. And how is this managed? It's not managed at all. You have a meter and you pay your bill. So we again have installed a new smart meter, sensors, and now we apply our own developed software, which we co-develop with the clients based on their needs. And what you see here, every single dot is a store in the UK. And this model at the moment, we have about 20 parameters that we look at. We only show um, four parameters here. So how, often, how long is the shop open? What is the shop opening pattern? Because you have to ramp up the store. Uh, what's the day load? How often do doors uh, open and close? And what's the night load? Just to show fear, uh, four of them. And what you see here in green and red, when you're green, you're very efficient, either because the building is great, everything is managed fine, or the shop manager does knowingly or unknowingly a ter terrific job. But you see a huge spread, a huge spread. We can even tell with that model when the shop manager is sick and someone else manages the shop because you get all the data in real time. So in just that particular example, that if you just move the bottom shops to the average, and we are at already beyond that, but just the bottom shops to the average, that means it represents for this client 12 gigawatt hours of energy waste. So that is an application of software that we deploy with customers on energy, etc. And the last example is something which is about reinventing the core. Imagine you're doing 30 years energy sales. You're building energy systems, old IT stacks, and you upset every second customer with the invoice of your energy bill because something is still not always working and you don't get it right for customers. And it, it is quite old sometimes, 10, 15 years in today's world is old systems. That was basically all, almost all energy companies are faced with. So we say, instead of improving that whole system, let's just rebuild it. And how long do you think it would take a large company to do that? So we did the whole thing from design to implementation in two markets, in the UK and in Germany, in 10 months the whole stack. And now we have to work the system. That will take some time, but that is the future. So there are four examples I would like to show. First one, if you're a customer and you want to get a tariff, be it a green tariff, something with your meter, something special you want to do, a quote, also getting the right offer based on your consumption profile, 30 seconds. We will get better at it because we're also using AI in the background to manage that process. So what offer is right for you. The second one is what I really love 
is this whole engine uses data everywhere. And I'll give you an example. That means the teams working on this, they change how they work. They change every hour. They look at the data and say, where did we lose the customer? Where was the conversion? Why was this thing not was this up? Why is the response time too slow? And we measure that also on all devices. We know from which device the demand comes from. A proposition, a tariff to develop that in the old world takes six to nine months, sometimes 500,000 euros. With this system, and that's the design this way, we can develop basically all traditional propositions within 24 hours, including testing. And last but not least, we talk about employees. Whenever a customer wants to be in touch with us on a personal level, they can still call us. And the agents who are involved in the design, they have a 360 degree view of the customer on social media, the whole history of the engagement. And they also um, get what we call next best action, what to offer the customer. So, the customer journey, everything has been done mobile and all screens, but it's actually a mobile experience from getting a quote, a consumption quiz where we would like to, in a playful way, in the UK we do that, find out about the customer problem, takes a few moments, then the tariff selection and the very easy sign up. And that is also going through continuous change and improvement. The customer tracking, just one example. So of course, when you serve a customer and, and you look at the whole lifetime of the customer, you have different journeys. You have I join journey, I switch journey, the payment journey, I leave journey, which should never happen. So you have different journeys. And this example is the I join journey. So we have broken that journey down into 50 points that we all measure in real time. And, we, and the team is sitting there and looking at where can we improve? How can we lift uh, conversion rates? Of course, then the question is how do we automate that further? But that is the future and that changes the culture, the way we work. Um, this is how we design then tariffs. You have, of course, in the background, the way it's dimensioned, how you design the, the, the um, tariff structures uh, in a mathematical way, but you can select the different components and pull them together in a kind of parameterized way. And last but not least, the 360 degree um, uh, view of the customer. So first it starts with using the intelligence who is calling if the customer wants to tell us. Let me be clear, it's all based on privacy rules. But if we know where the customer is calling from, if we are allowed to use what might the problem be, we can direct the customer to the right skilled agent. So it's skill-based routing. And that is something we also continuously improve automatically. We have the history of the customer. And by the way, in the My Eon account, the customer is seeing also their own history in the same way. So the agent and the, and the customer they have a match. And then you have service guidance. So the agent um, will also say, make an offer now, etc. And also based on history. So if you're very upset and you tell us, I'm so unha unhappy with the experience, we probably would not try to sell you something. So um, there's also a bit of intelligence behind uh, to, to, to understand the mood potentially of the client so that we don't make anything that would, may upset the customer further. So that is the future, and that is reinventing the core. We're running, if you, if you like, still in two worlds. And we have decided not to say, let's improve the old one a little bit. Well, we're going all on in on this one, and this will take some time. This will take some time. So change, cultural change, doesn't happen just like that. So these were three examples. And to finish off, I'd like to finish with, in my view, one of the most important things. Because whatever we do technically, in my view, it's all about culture. If we are positive about technology, we can do something with it. When you are skeptical or when you are miserable, it's very difficult to create something new. When you're not curious, it's very difficult to find new things. So you need to have a certain culture to do all of that. 
if, if one is very proud of everything we do, we don't want to change, it's very difficult to change. So it's about the ability to change. So it's about culture. The first thing what we're trying to do is, I know we're in Germany, we, you have to be clear on a vision. I think a famous politician once said, when you have a vision, you have to go to the doctor. That's bullshit. Vision is very important. I think humans, also companies, they need a vision. We need to know where we are heading. We don't know where exactly where we're going, but we need to know what could the world in five years for us look like. So that's the vision. We are clear on that. And I tried to explain that with the democratization of energy. If you look at our product portfolio, the technology we put into our grids, how we make our grids digital, so we can solve so many more customer problems with that. That's our vision. Second we, as an organization, you need to be clear, or our people need to be clear, what is the ask of me? What do I have to do when I come to work? Secondly, they also have to be empowered. If they have to do three layers approval, you know, you kill all creativity. You have to empower them, but you also have to be accountable. And I think to, to do that, what we did in 10 months, requires clarity, empowerment, and accountability. The third one is curiosity. We are really learning how to nurture curiosity and courage. We really want to have people come up with ideas and allow them to test them out. And I don't like the word failing, it's about learning. It's learning to do better. And that's what we are trying to do. Are we there? By no means. But this is the journey we're on. Fourth, start with what people do and not what they think. That is very important because everyone has an opinion. Everyone has an idea. Ideas are easy, but execution is everything. So what is important is the only thing that matters is what we do. And we encourage to do things and not just to think things. And that's why I'm trying to also get across. It's not just digital something on the top. Make it part of the core. So we have the team spread out in the entire business working in every problem we have, be it what we call legacy, be it new. It's core, it's everywhere. It's not just some gimmick for the management board on the top, it's real, it's everywhere. And then you have to talk about scale. I love the word pilot, but if the pilot never takes off, it will never happen. So we constantly think about scaling. How do we make sure it really grows? Also eventually with superior growth rates. And all of that requires communication consistently, continuous communications on all levels, and also with a relevant language to our people, to our customers, amongst each other, and we're not doing enough of that. And last one is about timing. Because we need to use the power of speed. So we have the saying, one month is the new year, and that's kind of the time frame we're thinking about. And that, I think, Corporates should be obsessed about speed because the world is changing so fast. We don't do that all our, on, our, on our own, by ourselves. We don't know everything. We are learning and we're quite becoming much, much better at it about collaboration. So it's about, with partners, jointly serving customers. We don't have to do everything our, ourselves. It is about also developing products and services together with other companies in the good old term co-opetition. And I think in Germany we have to sometimes learn this. We also have dedicated teams working together with other companies on site. Some companies coming to us, we are going to them. And last but not least, we become more selective about partnerships. And why? Because it's very easy to have an idea to think, but the doing requires real engagement also from senior management to push that sometimes through. And that has to work on both ends. Because a lot of corporations and collaborations are announced on the thinking idea level, but never really happen. And since we do that and agree also with our partners, I think it's going quite well. That's what I really want to share with you. Energy is exciting, it's very emotional, and there's so much more we can do with energy. Thank you very much.